Hi everyone, today we're doing something a little bit different. We're looking at the best pencil to use to sketch under your watercolour painting. It's the question I get asked so frequently, so I thought let's get some of the best pencils around, test them out all together and see what we come up with. So stick around to the end to see what the results are. Right then, here we have an array of pencils that I think are worth considering for watercolour painting. The first thing I want to talk about is your regular graphite pencil, the kind of pencil that's easily available in a stationery shop. So we're going to talk about these for here for the moment. So this rather well-worn pencil down the middle here is a traditional HB graphite pencil, the kind, like I said, readily available in stationery shops and is the kind of pencil that you just pick up in school or an office or whatever. Um, so what does H and B mean? Well, H stands for hard and B stands for black. And that's because the H pencil is a very fine point. It makes a very precise line and B for black, it is a much softer pencil um, and you get a much sort of deeper, sort of charcoalier kind of finish. But you can see here, I've got HB there, but then I've got one with H, one with B, and then one along here with 6B, which is all about the amount of whether it's gone in the direction of being a really hard pencil or a much more soft black pencil. And you can see by 6B, you can go all the way along and get a really, really intense finish. Now, I find personally, uh, all of these pencils have got a use in watercolour painting. Um, so for doing botanical painting, a little bit like something like this, a nice flower, something nice and precise, I would go for um, an HB or an H because these kind of pencils are really precise and they keep the paper clean. But they can be a little bit difficult to rub out. So that's why you often see me doing the bare minimum of pencil lines and doing them so faint that it's sometimes quite infuriating that uh, you can't see what I'm doing. So that's what I'm using for a botanical piece like this. However, if I am doing something that requires a bit more of a sort of loose approach and I just want to sketch something in, something like a landscape, something a little bit like this, then I would use the B pencils that are just a little bit softer, a little bit more charcoal-y, um, and they rub out really nice and easily, but they can also smudge on the paper. So enough of me talking, let's try out these pencils first. So let's have a go. So we're starting with the H pencil, which I'll write an H up here. Now I am going to draw three lines with each pencil. The first is going to be super faint, that I imagine it's hard to see. The second is going to be fairly strong. And then the third is going to be really, really pressing very, 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 very hard. Oop, so hard that I did that. Okay, so the H pencil, this is the finest point pencil. Let's pop it there so we can remember it. Okay, HB. So this is our my most commonly used pencil that I love very dearly, but it is, like I say, just a simple graphite pencil. There we go, light. Hard. And then last of all, really, really, really hard. <laughs> well, you know I'm pressing hard, so that's cool. Then B. Light. heavy and then let's see if I split really really heavy
Last of all, 6B. It's quite an extreme on the scale. There we go. Ah, you can, you can already see it's a smudgy old pencil. Okay, so light, heavy, and heaviest. We've got ourselves three sets of lines. So I can already see that the H pencils the finest point lines, the lightest lines, are really, really delicate, which is fantastic for when you're working in watercolour. The B pencils are definitely thicker, darker and stronger, but we're going to do a few tests. So let's clear the decks here. The first thing I'm going to do is with a fairly clean finger, <laughs> it is a clean finger, I'm going to try and smudge the pencil. Okay. Not much luck there. A little bit of movement. Ah, now this is where we really start to see the difference between the H and the B. So I'm cleaning off my finger each time. And then, so we can see that if you are doing a painting where you're going to first sketch your pencil, if you've got a B or a large amount of B in your pencil, you're much more likely to get a slightly messy page um, smudging the pencil all over. In that instance, I would recommend having either a bit of scrap paper or a bit of kitchen roll under your hand, like so, to be able to draw things, just because then that prevents you from getting too much mess going on. Okay, the next test I want to do is when I just swipe a clean wet brush over the top of it, what happens? So, not a lot. And this, I'm really trying to disturb the pencil. Well, that's good. So all of these graphite pencils are staying put on the whole, even if we're really disturbing them with our brush. So it doesn't matter whether you've gone for H, HB, B or 6B, they're all staying put very nicely. Now I'm going to try a dilute color. Get a bit of cobalt blue deep here. And now we want to start looking at how the paint goes on over the top. Whether the pencil has left a kind of funny residue that makes the paint sort of spring away, spring back from it. So far, so good. I mean, I've never had, yeah, like I say, I'm a big fan of the HB pencil in particular. This one's getting the tiniest bit of pick up in terms of the color sort of slightly picking up a little bit of the black pencil but on the whole still pretty good so these graphite simple graphite pencils are still working out as a fairly good idea for watercolor but the one thing we're all wondering about is can we rub out pencil once it has been painted over so I'm going to do a strong, let's get really strong actually, I want to really get an opaque paint over the top of these pencils. Because of course there are times where you will have painted a, a thick or a dark colour over the top and you won't even see the pencil so it won't even be a problem. I really layer up this paint. And the H and HB pencil, those light lines, are the ones that are most likely to become completely invisible under a strong, strong colour. So that's another thing in their favour. Okay. We're going to let this dry and we're going to let it dry 100% because it is so important that your paint is 100% bone dry before you attempt to rub out pencil on it. 
So we've got a bone dry piece of paper here. It's so important to make sure it's completely dry. And then the eraser that you use is all important too. I have quite often talked about this kneadable putty eraser and mine is from Faber-Castell. Um, all the links to all the products that I'm using today are in the episode notes below. So have a look down there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rub out the pencil on the two colorful pieces. Now, um, technique of successful rubbing out of pencil, you should not press really, really hard. It's all about doing a nice, light, even technique. If I just start on top and start rubbing down a little bit. Now, what's happening on these two H pencils is only the lightest pencil is successfully rubbing out. The two that are too heavy are not rubbing out because they are too heavy. So that is a really important point to make. When you are drawing your pencil for watercolor, it must be lightweight, but it's even rubbing out quite nicely on those. But if I try rubbing out I'm going to get some off, but I'm not going to get a lot off. But it works beautifully for the lightest pencils. But you can see also that even on the page where I've not painted, it's struggling to come off. So it just goes to show that actually painting over pencil, especially if you're painting over in a translucent manner, it really doesn't make it too difficult to rub pencil out. Let's have a look at the, the B pencils. Still, it's not coming off brilliantly, is it? I would much prefer using the H's, don't you think? Because you can see here that it is managing to come off a bit better on the unpainted bits of paper. And it's not even worth trying <laughs> with that heavy heavy pencil. So you can see here that really we need to stick to HB or H if we really want a successful rubbing out of pencil. It does come off to a certain extent with the B pencils, but I really do recommend if you are needing to use a B pencil that you use it as lightly as possible. But also this takes us neatly into our next little materials test. Up until this point, I've only been talking about these four graphite pencils, but the wonderful manufacturers of watercolor products have created water soluble pencils. Now I'm not talking about watercolor pencils that come in all colors of the rainbow just like watercolor paint that you use to create your color. I'm talking about graphite soluble pencils. So the pencils we use to sketch under watercolor just like I've been talking about with these pencils but they are designed to dissolve so there should be very little need for the question of rubbing out pencils. So if you do enjoy the B style of pencil, you can get yourselves, this is a 6B pencil just here, graphite, but it is water soluble. So I'm gonna go through these five pencils, but I'm gonna pit it against my old favorite, the regular HB, and let's see how we get on. So I'm gonna talk you through each of these pencils. So we know the HB, we've talked about this one. Now this one is called the Koh-i-Noor, that's the name of the brand, Progresso Aquarelle, and it is entirely made of water-soluble graphite. So there's no wood in this pencil. And I am going to draw a nice light pencil line and a heavy one. So that is a nice rounded hold. It's got quite a weight to it, which some people really, really like. So we'll just call that Koh i Noor. As I said, the details and links for all the pencils in this, te um, in this test 
are linked in the episode notes below. Okay, so now another fantastic stationery company, Faber Castell, I've also already mentioned um, with my putty rubber. We've got an HB pencil here, but graphite aquarelle is a water soluble graphite pencil. So we'll draw a nice thin and thick line. Um, so it's it's calling itself an HB pencil. So we expect it to have a similar sort of fine point, quite hard finish, even though it already feels a little bit softer than my regular HB, but it can make a lovely fine point. So that's cool. So we'll call that HB soluble Faber Castell. Then I thought it would only be fair to get a 6B version of the same pencil. So again, this is water soluble. It is Faber Castell and it is water soluble graphite. Light thin line and a heavy line. And if you're finding, whoa, <laughs> really heavy line. So you can just see the ease at which that broke just shows how soft that pencil is. Now, then I thought it would be a good idea to look at some coloured watercolour pencils that are the colour of graphite. So I went for Caran d'Ache and their, uh, I can't remember what colour I've got, Caran d'Ache Carmine Lake, this is the colour I've got. Um, so it, I'll just blow that away. So Carmine Lake is a lovely gray color. And so this is one of those colorful watercolor pencils that you would get in a set. And I just thought maybe it would be a brilliant sketching pencil as well. So let's call this car mean lake. So this one is not, it's not a case of whether it's an HB or a B or whatever. It is just the color of gray, but it is water soluble because it is a purpose designed watercolour pencil. And then last one is we've got the Derwent Graphy Tint, which is also a water soluble coloured pencil and the colour is Mountain Grey. And this is a really soft pencil. Okay, so let's do our fine line. So a delicate light one and then a heavy one. So what am I expecting to see? Well, we know that the HB pencil in normal graphite is really good. It doesn't smudge. It rubs out fairly easily, um, but it essentially stays put whilst you're sketching. And then from the water soluble pencils, I am expecting the water, once it's brushed over the top, to start dissolving the color and it's starting to disappear. What we're looking for is whether, when that colour starts to dissolve, whether it starts to muddy the water that's gone over it, or if it just sort of disappears into the ether. So first things first, let's do the smudge test with our finger. So we know already that that is not going to smudge as much, but, oh no smudge on that, but quite a lot on the Koh i -Noor. I'm expecting quite a bit of smudge from the 6B. Clean that finger off. A little bit, but not too much from Carmine Lake. And a little bit, but not too much from those two pencils. So kind of as I expected, the 6B has got the most smudge, quite a bit from the Koh i -Noor, which is the solid graphite pencil, but on the whole, not too shabby. Now let's look at some clean water going across. So I clean my brush off in my water. And what I'm doing is I'm making, ah, I'm making a point of running my brush back and forth over the pencil. So if you can see, there's a little bit of disturbance there. Okay, keep my brush clean. Let's see what happens here. So these, remember these pencils are water soluble. So the idea is, is that the color dissolves and disappears as water goes over the top of it. Now that's done a rather lovely job of dissolving the pencil, but not disturbing and muddying the clean water too much. Let's 
have, oh dear. Okay, <laughs> that's probably not what we want for these purposes because remember we're looking for a pencil that can sketch underneath our watercolour painting and act as a, as a really nice guide but then can disappear when we want it to, whether that is through the pencil dissolving in water or us being able to rub it out underneath the painting. Okay, that is, we're expecting these two to muddy the water with their colour because that's what they're designed for really. Saying that though, and I'm really going to town on this, I'm trying to disturb it, that one is working quite nicely as a sketching pencil. So, so far, I think the soluble HB from Faber-Castell and the Mountain Grey from Derwent are looking pretty good. HB, we know that wasn't going to dissolve, so that's all fine. Okay, so let's get a nice faint colour now. Again, we know the HB graphite is just going to do very little. So it's definitely affecting the colour of the blue. You can see there that that blue is nice and clean. That one has gone a little bit grey, but also we're not really getting a very satisfying dissolve of pencil there. Okay, clean brush, blue again. Now that is pretty good. If you compare that blue to that one, it's still looking quite like the first blue there. Get a bit more colour in. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, that is very much affecting the colour, so we wouldn't want that pencil muddying up our lovely colours. Mm, not bad, not bad. Again, it's doing quite a nice job. There is a little bit of colour muddying, but not nearly to the extent of these two really interesting. Okay, so now we're going to get a really concentrated blue. By the way, I'm making a point of really rubbing the brush back and forth over these to really make the pencil work hard. And of course it's going to be harder to see the pencil with these ones, so that's half the beauty of using a regular graphite pencil, but very very lightly if you are painting heavily on top. It's harder to see what's going on, but what is good across the board at the moment is on the whole, the colour isn't getting too muddied by these graphite pencils. So the the aim with these ones was to see whether the water would suitably dissolve the pencil and it's not so much about can we rub it out or not. So from here I can see quite a clear winner and it is the soluble HB pencil. So we had in the first round, if I get this one up here, our regular HB was the winner. And then in the second round, the Faber-Castell soluble graphite pencil was a really fantastic clear winner because I can see that the pencil has pretty much disappeared with all of them, but it has not disturbed the colour in the way that some of the others have. This one wasn't bad, I'd say this was a close second, the Mountain Grey. So, at the moment, our top three pencils for watercolour are these three, and we're going to do one last little test. Here we are for the final part of testing, and with one final question that I think very few of us think to ask when we're trying to work out what the best pencil is for watercolour, and that is, how long do we want the watercolour to have a pencil guide? i.e. how long do we want that pencil to stick around? Because it's all very well to use one of these wonderful water-soluble pencils, sweep a bit of watercolour over it, and then, oh, it disappears, and we forget 
what it was we were painting in the first place. Whereas an HB pencil, which we run the risk of maybe painting too much over the top and not being able to um, not being able to rub it out because we might have also drawn it too heavily. So we're sort of trying to work out what is best for us as individual painters. So we all might have a different outcome to this, but that's the beauty of this and that's why there's so much choice on the market. So what I've done is I've drawn the same stem of leaves with each pencil. So the HB for this one, Faber-Castell soluble graphite, and then over here we've got the Derwent um, Graphitint Mountain Grey colour. Okay, so move those to one side. I am going to paint these leaves. And what I'm going to do is I, I made a point of drawing the pencil just a tiny bit heavier than I normally would do, just so it's really clear for you to see. And I'm going to paint this in my sort of regular way and we're just gonna see what happens. So I've got my, I've got a size eight brush, which is quite a large one for doing a, uh, a thin stem, but that's all cool. And then I'm gonna paint in my leaves. I mean, I've painted in the whole, uh, I've drawn in the whole leaf for you guys here, even though I don't normally paint in draw in everything. Um, I normally just draw in the central line of the leaf, but I thought it would be most useful for this test. I've got a little bit of the colour going in there. So we can still very much see the graphite pencil because it's not going to dissolve, it's not going anywhere colour I've used is kind of fairly strong but not crazily strong so if I was painting this painting ideally I would want to get rid of this pencil afterwards by rubbing it out so we're going to have to see which goes best so the next one we've got is a water soluble graphite pencil HB so I guess what I'm interested in with the HB here is how many sweeps of the brush do I have to do over this pencil for it to disappear? Because when we paint in a loose watercolour style, I'm always encouraging you to try and paint with as few brush strokes as possible. But if we want to be able to get rid of our pencil, we might need to go over it a few more times. So that's the thing, it's not just a case of going, ah, the Derwent water-soluble graphite pencil dissolves when we paint over the top of it. It's just how much painting over the top of it do we need to do? Because you saw in those little tests with the blue bit of paint, I really went back and forth over them quite a lot. Now I can see that the pencil is still faintly there, but it's definitely dissolved a little bit. And then last but not least, the Oh, so much fluff on my brush. This is the coloured pencil. giving it a fair chance by doing a few extra brush strokes. Let's see, that's nice. A few over there, so we'll do a few extra brush strokes on this one as well, just to help it along. Give them both a fighting chance. Okay, I've done my three sets of leaves. We need to wait for these to dry 100%, and then we can see if this one rubs out and which the best pencil to draw with is now dry I'm just rubbing out the last of the pencil on this one but I've not touched these two because the whole point is the water dissolves and 
we can see that we've got a pretty good central one here. I think this has dissolved better than this one because we can still see some faint lines. But the beauty of this one is that that pencil stayed around until we decided we wanted to get rid of it by rubbing it out. With all of them, there is the faintest, faintest bit of pencil and some of the heavier bits, but that is the trade-off. And to be honest, if I was drawing at the lightness that I normally would be doing, if I was just drawing at home, I'm confident that the pencil would entirely disappear. So in conclusion, my top tips for the best pencil to draw under watercolour is either the graphite aquarelle from Faber-Castell if you want your paint uh, to dissolve your pencil and for it to disappear fairly quickly and coming in a close second in that category would be the Dewent graphite, uh, graphitint, sorry, mountain grey coloured pencil. And then if you're keen for your pencil to stick around for as long as you want it to and then be able to rub it out is the regular traditional graphite HB pencil. I've used a Staedtler brand but I would be confident in saying any kind of HB graphite pencil would do the same provided that you draw lightly. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found that helpful and it will help you move forward with doing your sketches and allow the pencil to disappear underneath your watercolour paintings. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on and which pencil you might go for. So subscribe and you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.